Uh, I know you're in Vegas now, and I'm sure the weather's probably fantastic. Yeah. Uh, here, not so much, but I know yeah. that you're from Minnesota, so this isn't going to be Minnesota, like a... I'm Minnesota, you know. It won't be a shock to you. No, we're for global warming there. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. We want it. <laughs> it's hard to, you know, like it's hard to sell global warming in the places where we grew up, you know? Right, where there's snow you know? nine months out of the, you know, you got yeah, winter in August. Louis, <laughs> Louis, what about global warming? Listen, are you going to help shovel or not? <laughs> You know, I can't live anywhere where the term good gloves is used. Right. <laughs> I love that. Going out, yeah. You got your good gloves? <laughs> you know, my mom, here's the thing you do realize. You pick up people when you live in those places when it's cold, if they're out on the road. Absolutely, yep. You know, my mom would have picked up anyone. Sure. Let's pick him up. <laughs> mom, that's Charlie Manson. That's all right, Louie. I'll talk to him. <laughs> He's got a knife, Mom. Well, we need a good knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. And you're so funny, Louie, without any foul language or without the shock value that, you know, a lot of comedians, uh, I guess over a lot of years have done, but uh, you've made it all these years without that. And we well, think that's fantastic. I just try to imagine, you know, it just always came natural to me. I have to, I, I, I have to tell you the truth. It, it's just like... You know, um, I always imagined entertaining my family, and my mom, you know, she would always cringe a little if there was any foul language. She never swore once in her whole life that I remember. Huh. I think she said, shh, once. <laughs> and this, that was just the first two letters, you know. Um, and um, so it can't, but, you know, I have, I, you know, I can enjoy somebody who, you know, uh, uses other words in their act. You know, I believe in all that, you know, that people used to always call me all the time and say, what do I think of Dice or Sam or that? And I go, well, I think the greatest thing is is that we can have both things in this country, you know? Right, and it's still but, funny. <laughs> yeah, my thing is I'm trying to entertain the family. I want you to be able to feel like, you know, maybe you can remember some of the stuff in your family that, you know, will make you smile and make you happy. Right. That's really what I'm all about, and that's all I'm trying to accomplish. Let's talk about Lucas real quick. He's a great. You like Lucas, huh? Well, you know he what's has... great about Lucas is he comes from a very similar place that I do. Sure. You know, where we may not have to say much to even get a laugh. People are kind of amused by our just who we are. Mm -hmm. And then Lucas has such a you know, great spirit about himself. Like, I uh, just did a Showtime thing, Louis Anderson Presents, kind of like a Rodney Dangerfield okay. comedian special. Mm -hmm. But um, So I picked Lucas as one of the uh, comics on it, which will oh, be cool. airing, it'll be airing next year in, in 2011. But um, one of the things I noticed is that he's so likable. He is likable. He's a fun guy. Yeah. And he's making and quite a name. I predict that he'll have his own show. I predict that he just has to find the right vehicle for himself. And, you know, and he, um, he has nothing, yeah. nothing but good things to say about you, too, Louis. I mean, every time he's here, yeah. he, he talks about how you're, you've been his, his mentor and have really taken him under, under your wing. Well, you know, like, I just want him to do this stuff that's important. Like, I, I'm kind of tough on comics. I want him to work harder. I want him to stop all the baloney and and work harder because contrary to how easy it might look for me, I worked really hard on my act and still do. Absolutely. I did. Well, just like you, you know, like, you know, people have no idea what it takes to pull off. They take for granted hearing you every day on your show. Mm -hmm. When you have a radio show, people don't have any idea what it takes to fill two, three, four hours. Right. Right. They don't, they don't know how much work you really do. They don't know that. After the show the next day, you're probably working on the next day's show. Right. Or you worked all night, or when you get in there early and read all the stuff that came across the wire and figure out how you can make it funny, how you can make it entertaining, and how you can make stuff that's really not the most pleasant news palatable right? so that people can enjoy it. Yeah, so, exactly. The, know, other, the other thing, Louis, I think that the, the reason that you've lasted so long, you have an insanely big heart. I mean, obviously, just talking to you, you, you can tell that. And uh, I think a lot of the people that are that are coming to the show next weekend are, are looking forward to uh, the meet and greet with you and stuff too. That's a really cool thing that you do. Yeah. Well, you know, people want to. They, you know, I, first of all, thank you for saying that nice thing about my heart. I, I attribute it to my mom. You know, she had a great heart, and 
and even my dad, you know, my dad, you know, especially during tough holiday times, I can remember we'd go to the store and my dad would have a bag of groceries that he would set aside. And then on the way home, he would drop it off at somebody's house. And I always thought, here's this guy who's so grumpy and, Mm -hmm. you know, cantankerous, just dropping off a bag of groceries for somebody who's in need, just leaving it on the doorstep, not even embarrassing them, Mm -hmm. Uh, just knowing that they're in need and and doing it. And I never forgot that. I always thought, wow, Uh, my dad, you know, and that's why I was able to create those characters. But I love meeting my fans in those situations, you know, um, that's yeah. That's the thing. My parents actually went and saw you at the uh, Excalibur maybe like two years ago. Uh huh. And uh, my mother, not not the kind of person that goes up and just you know will ask someone for an autograph or a picture or anything like that. But you came up to them after the show and offered a picture, and she still that's like her favorite picture of all time is the picture of you and her. So. Wow. Yeah. That's really sweet. I hope that. Uh... I hope that she's going to come to the show. Uh, she may. I, we'll definitely and if she be doesn't, there. I hope you'll bring the picture over so I can sign it. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe I'll see if I can line that up. That'd be kind of cool. Well, Louis, we're looking forward to it. December 9th through the 11th, Lucas Seeley presents and uh, three big shows. Well, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, I'm getting ready also. I'm going to do Ferguson again if people want to see some of the stuff I've been working on. Oh, um, you know, I, I, s- uh, I just did two Fergusons, and now I have a third one on on uh, January uh, 27th. So I'll be working on the new material, and uh, You're talking... I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. He's a great guy. He just got nominated for an Emmy, or Grammy, uh, for his book, I'm sure, on tape. So You're talking about Craig Ferguson, right? Yeah, Craig Ferguson, I, I uh, saw Late you... Late Show. Last great month... guy, very funny. Last month on there, you did well, a bit about the uh, Twilight movie. You do the Twilight yeah, yeah, movie. Yeah, the Twilight thing. I'm definitely going to do that in Billings. That's fantastic. We're looking forward to it, Louis. Hey, All thanks right. for taking the time to talk to me today. I appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. And I uh, look forward to saying uh, hi to everybody, and please tell your mom a big love. Hey, big love from all of us. Thanks a lot, Louis. All right. Thanks, man.